Welcome back everyone to the 2021 K K-Drama Awards And this is actually part 2 Yes, this is part 2 Hashtag ASMR Yeah, I'm really bad at this So yeah, if you did miss part 1, please go check the description box or the link in the cards Because I really did watch a lot of K-Dramas just for this year's awards so just a little refresher on the categories in this K-Drama Awards. We have categories ranging from dramatic, fantastic, sarangye, so healing, need Wi-Fi for sci-fi, so thrilling, it's criminal, say yay for seguk, slice of life, lawfully awesome, and most pleasant surprise. So let me translate this into plain English. It means melodramas or mokjangs, fantasy or supernatural K-dramas, romance and rom-coms, medical K-dramas, sci-fi, thriller, crime detective dramas, seiku historical dramas, slice of life K-dramas, legal K-dramas, and well, most pleasant surprise is most pleasant surprise. So we did get through four categories in the previous video, and we still have a bunch left, so why not just get started? So our first category in part 2 is Slice of Life, one of our favorite K-drama genres. In this category, we have two, Navirera and Move to Heaven. So, of the two, which would I pick? Well, both are very heartwarming and soothing and just very heartfelt, but I think I would actually have to pick Move to Heaven. So while both are certainly very, very novel plot, in the K-drama world with Navilera being about an elderly grandfather learning ballet at his age and Move to Heaven I think is just even more heartfelt in the sense that it's about a family trauma cleaning company where they help people uncover untold stories through their objects that they've left behind after they pass. So I think this is truly a drama that inspires you to think about what goes on in people's lives, untold stories, and who they really are. With that, let's turn over to some very dramatic plot lines that are usually untold in real life because they probably would not happen, but who knows. So in this category, we have two dramas, Mine and Penthouse. So like I said in part one, I did not watch Mine. I actually dropped it after like the first two episodes because it was too dark. So by default, Penthouse season two and three would win. However, would I have really watched it if it weren't for the success of season one and just how popular it is? Probably not. It, uh, if I had to describe the crazy plot of Penthouse in one sentence, I would say this. Someone grafted the world of the married to Sky Castle and then injected it with steroids. And my steroids, that includes people just out resurrecting left and right because they have godly powers to defy law and order and just, I don't know, law of nature. It's crazy. I feel like anyone who watches like mokjong melodramas come in with the mindset that, oh, we're going to expect crazy things and that's totally fine. But I think Penthouse's plot just went a little too crazy and just completely nonsensical to the point where it's not believable. And I would totally add season two, at minimum season two, to my list of worst K-dramas just because it was just really messed up. Season three was slightly better, but not that much better. Yep, so that's it. Let's use that adrenaline rush for thriller, crime, and detective K-dramas. So as you can see, this is a very crowded category, but I'm not going to use the same bracket system as I used for romance just because that took way too long and this is less controversial. So in this poll, we do have Squid Game, which kind of, hello, topped the charts um, for Netflix in 94 countries for quite some time, it's super popular. But you know, the other K-dramas on this list are not that far behind in terms of awesomeness. We have DP, Chidi Sen, Police University, Voice Season 4, Sweet Home, which technically aired in 2020, My Name, Beyond Evil, and The Veil. So Mouse is technically supposed to be on this list, but as I mentioned in part one, I did not get around to watching it because I had some spoilers and just couldn't get myself to watch it. Anyways, if I could pick, you know, at least two, in this category, this would make my life a lot easier, but I'm really trying to maintain the integrity of these Dachibi K-Drama Awards. 
So by process of elimination and just to narrow this pool down, I would actually narrow it down to just two for season four and Chidi Sen, and the winner of the two is actually Chidi Sen. So I love Voice. Uh, this is the fourth season. Certainly, season one is still my favorite. Season four, I really picked things back up, but Chidi Sen was very new. I think it had combined elements of crime, um, just the thrill and suspense, and a bit of fantasy. And certainly, it's about rangers, which is I think. A profession that K dramas have not really been centered on before, and this is very novel. So I think through this combination of factors, this drama was a true vehicle for something very fresh, very new, very grappling, and really kept you at the edge of your seat. So I would really highly recommend this drama if you get a chance to watch it, just because it's quite a thrill. Anyways, moving on to a related category: lawfully awesome legal K dramas. So in this category, we do have two: Pinchenjo and Law School. Oh, sorry, wrong poster. But I am sure both of these dramas have been high on everyone's radars.、Um, certainly, both are not quite legal, legal, but they do focus on the legal profession and just. Crimes and how to uncover corruption and all that good stuff. So Vincenzo was super popular, of course,、uh, with Song Joongi being the male lead, and it's truly a vigilante K drama with you know a mafia、um, consigliere being the you know star of the show. And law school is about you know a law school, so students and faculty kind of embroiled in this. Corruption, crime, murders—kind of mixed, just a whole mess essentially. And they really work together to navigate, you know, why they are pursuing this degree, why they are in this profession, how they can uphold justice. However, I would have to choose Vincenzo just because it was one heck of a drama with plenty of action, heartfelt characters, so much good chemistry, so much thrill.、Um, yeah, just a great K drama. So, if Song Joong Ki's visuals are outwardly awesome, then we now turn to fantasy K dramas. So, in this category, we do have five:、um, My Roommate Is a Gumiho, Hello Me, The Encounter Counter, Do Met Your Service, and Sell Your Haunted House. So, this is actually quite a busy category this year. And man, there's something wrong with my cursor. Anyways, I think all these K dramas certainly have their. Pros and cons, like you know, for anything.、Um, but out of these, interestingly enough, I don't have very strong feelings for most of them, except for of course the winner.、Um, certainly, my roommate is a Gumiho is kind of cute. Doom at my service is certainly fresh, but it did get kind of draggy. Sal, your haunted house was di certainly different for a supernatural K drama. And then Hello Me, I think, was very heartfelt as well, and I would actually highly recommend.、Um, but in terms of the winner of this category, that would be the Uncanny Counter. And you notice there's a theme here, like this K drama is just action packed. It has so many great elements, including the fantasy aspect. So all around show stealer. Let's go. Okay, now that we have that past us, let's move on to historical or saga K dramas. So in this category we have four, which is actually more than you know what I expected. Last year was quite a drought.、Uh, I think I even scrapped the category. But let's actually begin this by process of elimination. Lovers of the Red Sky can go away, just because it was pretty boring.、Um, it got very draggy and kind of confusing. But these remaining three are certainly very very powerful historical K dramas of this year. I mean. I was hooked,、um, to say the very least, and that's something. So if you've heard me rave about Mr. Queen plenty,、um, time travel combined with the historical aspect, some soul swapping, goodness. The King's Affection has some gender bending. The Red Sleeve, I think, has that you know romance oomph to it that is very captivating. But if I really, really had to choose, this is definitely a tough choice. I think. The winner would probably, probably, probably be Mr. Queen. So I think if you had to ask me for my close second, that would be the Red Sleeve, which is still airing.、Um, 
and it's been kind of blowing the charts in terms of ratings. Uh, but Mystery Queen, again, what I'm looking for is something that is fully packed with plenty of great elements in a K-drama when I'm choosing these winners, and that would be Mr. Queen. I mean, feel free to check out my other past videos from this year just raving about this K-drama, but please check out Mr. Queen. You're going to be in for a treat if you do. Okay, moving on to the next category, we have Most Pleasant Surprise, which are K-dramas that I really didn't expect would be that awesome, in my opinion. So awesome means different things for these various K-dramas. So for example, One the Woman, I wasn't even planning to watch it um, because I thought like the plot was very cliche, you know, amnesia and you wake up and you know, it turns out you're replacing a doppelganger. However, I'm glad it did. I mean, less so for the romance factor, which is kind of ironic because it won in the romance category, but certainly the action the chemistry of the cast, so awesome. Squid Game, awesome because I'm just so proud of how this K-drama took the world by a storm and gained the recognition that it deserved and hopefully season 2 gets a rehash on Netflix. My name, Han So Hee, I'm not really a big fan of her acting uh, because I really thought she was more of a you know pretty face. But like she said, when she kind of explained why she took on this role, she really wanted to shed her pretty face image and show that she's much more than that. And I think she just did that in this K-drama. Sweet Home, I'm not usually a fan of the gore, um, but I think, I mean, I didn't read the red tune, but I think this was still a pretty great K-drama overall. Just a lot of dedication from all the actors, pretty great chemistry that brought, you know, the horror to something that was alive. The King's Affection, I'm not really a fan of gender bending because it's very cliche, but somehow this K-drama just kept me hooked and I think Park Bing's acting was great, like her gender bending approach was very sincere and that really showed. The Red Sleeve, again still airing, but I mean you can tell from the ratings how far that it's gotten. It's just doing so well, and I think it's because Lee Jun Ho and Lee Se Young, their sincere acting has really brought this K drama to life, just the whole story, and that is truly powerful. So that's all the K drama categories. Congratulations to all the winners, and of course, please leave your comments down below on, you know, which winners you certainly agree with, which ones you don't, and so forth. And let me know if you have any recommendations that I didn't actually watch this year. But next, I did want to turn to kind of the special accolades um, that I kind of do every year. And that would be Best Couple, Scene Stealer, and also my favorite variety shows. Which are, of course, not K-dramas, but certainly something that deserve a shout out. So let's start with the first special accolade, which is Best Couple Award. So as a little hint, the best couple goes to a couple in the drama Vincenzo. Oh, sorry, wrong poster. Yeah, this is not right either. Okay, there we go. That's the right poster. So yes, the best couple is from this drama and not sure if you can guess it, but it's actually a cameo couple. Yes, the word goes to Taehyung and Kim Sung Cho, who plays the role of Huang Min Sung, the CEO of Xinguang Bank, in the drama. Yes, this is a nod to LGBTQ community, and yeah, a very cute couple, even though, you know, Vincenzo kind of approached this guy for an ulterior motive. Nonetheless, it's pretty cute, and by the way, if you watched the movie Space Sweepers, which Song Joong Ki stars in, that's where his name, or fake name, in this segment of the drama comes from, Teo. Okay, moving swiftly to our next award category, which would be the Scene Stealer Award. So, a scene stealer is an actor or actress who outshines the rest of the cast, especially unexpectedly. And yeah, it could be likened to Hong Seok Chun in this scene over here, but yeah. In terms of K-dramas, the winner is Ahn ki from Vincenzo. He is played by Im Chol Su, and the character is essentially an international security intelligence service agent, team leader of the, I guess, Italian organized crime division, 
And yeah, he also happens to be his target's biggest fan. Yeah, he wanted Song Jong Ki's character to give him a hug. Can't blame him! So moving swiftly to variety shows, these gave me a lot of comfort in addition to the K-dramas. The first being Long Live Independence, which reminds me a lot of I Live Alone, but like Nick implies, it's about celebrities who move out for the first time and were following their first baby steps on their journey of living alone. So pretty cute show and I would highly recommend. Next up we have Two Days, One Night. Uh, which is the fourth season and you'll see that Kim Sun Ho is marked here with the star because he ended up leaving the show due to a controversy. You can google it, but this did give me a lot of comfort in the beginning of the year. Next up we have Sea of Hope, which is a pretty calm and soothing show starring a lot of stars who basically make food for guests um, at the seaside and while doing singing covers. And this reminds me a lot of the show Begin Again. Next up we have Sixth Sense Season 2 and this is a overall very funny and nice game show I guess where they kind of guess which business or whatever is fake. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting concept. I can't really explain it very well so go check it out. And then we have a very calm show from Na PD which stars the hospital playlist cast on 3 Meals a Day Doctor's Edition. Overall, you get to see these actors' great chemistry come from the K-drama into the variety show setting where they <laughs> make food together at a village essentially and it's very sweet. Then we have Yoon's Day, it's definitely one of my favorite shows. Um, Yoon's Kitchen is the series and this is a spin-off adding a new member, Choi Sheik, whom you will probably know from Train to Busan. Parasite and so forth and and we'd be remiss without giving a shout out to Yoon Yo Jung who won you know so many great awards this year with Minari and this is such a star-studded cast bringing you such heartfelt stories and warmth through this non PD show so yeah hope you enjoyed these variety show shout outs and I just wanted to take a moment to thank all of you for tuning in to this year's K-Drama Awards. Thank you so much for watching and if you haven't done so already, please make sure that you're subscribed. Hit that like button if you did enjoy this video and of course leave your comments down below. Would love your feedback on, you know, this year's K-Drama Awards, which dramas you enjoyed, which K-Drama winners that you did not agree with on this award show, and any of your favorite characters, actors, actresses, scene stealers, and variety shows. Leave them all down in the comments, can't wait to read them. And of course, if you want any more K-drama related content, check out the description box and also the cards up here for more. And I'll see you next year. Happy holidays everyone!